Hey guys, what's up? Redactions here and welcome back to this brand new video. And this weekend, we have another race weekend. We are racing in the uh, Dutch Championship for Rotax. Uh, we actually decided only uh, two weeks ago that we were going to race in this one. Actually, wasn't even sure if we were able to race in this one because there were so many entries, but we got lucky. We are at Bergen, of course, and I am lucky because for this whole weekend, it's actually forecast to be raining, so that's good. Now, because we actually didn't plan this race at the beginning of the year, we also didn't do it budget-wise. So we are in our own tent uh, and we are using our own engine. Uh, the team is here, I'm still racing with them for the BNL and everything, but for this race uh, we decided to be uh, in our own tent. We have, the, uh, we have the registration in a few minutes, I think in like an hour, and uh, after that we'll head to the track. Yeah, um, still raining, but uh, let me uh, show you guys around our crib, because we have our own tent with us. So we're pretty much almost all the way in the back of the paddock, uh, in our tent, and we actually have a guest driver. This is our cart of course, uh, yeah you know it, and we also have a junior with us this weekend, Rocco. We uh, have known him for a little while and uh, he had nowhere to uh, to be. So uh, yeah, we decided to let him uh, be with us. So yeah, we still have a couple of uh, hours actually before we can go out and track because this is very I mean, you can only drive at like one o'clock. So uh, yeah, have some waiting. Waiting to enter the race. Yeah. Ready, let's go. Alright guys, welcome on board back our Rotax Max card after our adventure on the ID shifter. Immediately we are starting off this weekend with running in an engine and that means uh, the engine has got some new parts, it got rebuilt recently and for the first few laps you cannot immediately go flat out, you have to kind of get like the parts used to being in the engine. So you have to go off the throttle really early at some straights like uh, I'm going to show you now. Yeah, you saw that at the halfway down the straight that you need to kind of let go or, uh, your foot of the gas so that it doesn't make too much revs. Uh, this is the case with most two-stroke uh, two stroke engines, but especially with Rotex. And speaking of Rotex, K Racing actually has a discount code for all Rotex and OTK parts on their website. You guys know K Racing, of course, but for those of you who don't, K Racing has been my sponsor for over a year now, and they're a web shop selling OTK, Rotex, and OMP products. For this week, we have a special discount code which gives you a 10% discount on all Rotex and OTK parts on their website. And even if the product is already on a discount, like a lot of things on the website already are, the 10% discount will actually stack on top of that. You just simply fill your basket with all kinds of stuff that you want, fill in the code RED10 in the discount code section, and then boom, 10% saved. So if you need any Rotex or OTK parts, you know where to get them. K Racing, use the code RED10 for a 10% discount and hurry up because the code is ending this Sunday. Anyways guys, we're back. Um, yeah, like I said, we are running in the engine and that means that you have to go off the throttle about halfway down the straight so that doesn't make too many revs. But even though we were running in the engine and going off the power at some points, we were still quite quick. And you guys know, I'm just quick in the rain and it definitely showed it right here. Um, yeah, you saw that, that even though we have to lift off the... Uh, throttle so early on we are still breaking later than most of the guys here which is really good here uh, we try to go around the outside of a guy but he uh, makes a little bit of a mistake so we do a beautiful switch back there as he gets launched to the outside then after a while we got the green light to push and we could do some crazy dive bombs here look at that one boom that one was from so far away and yeah it's just I I'm just really confident in the wet guys more than I am in the dry for some reason here we are behind our teammate Lawrence and again you see that we have a huge gap to him ahead of us but again here into the hairpin we go up the inside and boom job done no contact and we got past him so we could really do some insane dive bombs and you really have to look at how solid the cart is right now on the road there you can see we're breaking very aggressive to warm the tires hook it on the inside of the curve that was a little bit too aggressive because we got quite a lot of oversteer there here turning in full lock to the left get on the power you see that there's kind of a shock when i get on the power and we just launch out of the corner then on this left hand i take a little bit of curve to help the cart and rotating then uh, take the wide line here full lock again make the cart understeer here on the power oversteer turn into the right Again, full lock, we make the inside rear wheel lift and we get on the power and we get a little bit of a tank slapper on the exit there. Here, braking very hard, carrying a lot of speed onto the curb, going onto the power immediately. And yeah, you can just see that we get a rocket exit. And uh, yeah, I think that's a really good start to the weekend in the wet. All 
Right, that was supposed to be the second session, but it started raining and we were on slick and then we decided not to go out on track and now it's dry again. Nice. So uh, yeah, we're actually supposed to be here, but yeah, fuck. But yeah, it doesn't really matter. In the wet we had a blistering pace, as you could see, running in the engine and we could still overtake people, so that's good. Then in the end we started pushing a few laps and those were quite decent. So yeah, now uh, let's wait for session three, I guess. So yeah, session three of the day already. Unfortunately for us it's only the second session because due to the changing weather conditions we actually uh, missed the uh, second session. That's not great, of course you always want as much track time as possible when you go testing on the day of the race weekend. So uh, we were a little bit behind compared to the other ones and also you can see that we're struggling quite a bit. Uh, like I said in the beginning of the video, uh, we are in our own tent and we are also not running a race engine. This is my own engine that I used to go testing with and um, yeah. It's not the quickest and also in the session I was making a lot of mistakes as you can see there. Uh, I was struggling kind of with the handling and yeah it was just not 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 really that nice. Uh, and yeah it just looks terrible here there you can see it's very nervous again I make a little bit of a mistake brake too late carry too much speed into the corner here again I hit the curb on the inside. Yeah not my best drives uh, but luckily uh, after this session we kind of fixed the confidence part with the uh, handling but now you can actually see that now that we actually have some decent cornering speeds uh, you can really see how big of a difference a non-race engine makes compared to a rental engine that you hire from a team. Here we are behind our teammate Tommy here. Uh, we get a rocket ship exit. Uh, we kind of push him there. But once we get to the higher speed you can just see him absolutely rocket into the uh, sunset. Here in the corners you see that we uh, yeah, carry more or less the same speed through the corners. But then once again, once we get to the straights just bye bye. Um, it's not only the engine, uh, also we were running a little bit too large sprockets, so um, we had a little bit more pull of the corners and a little bit less top speed as we make a little bit of a mistake there. Now he's going to rocket away even more. Uh, so yeah, this session we were uh, quite a lot too slow. You saw that in the corners, uh, if I don't make a mistake like I did this lap, in the corners we're just fine, but we uh, definitely have the wrong sprocket on there, so we are missing some top speed. Uh, yeah, you can see they basically can pull alongside already before the braking zone, which is not ideal. Um, so we're definitely going to have to change that sprocket and also we're a few horsepowers down which is not ideal. But uh, yeah, I might be complaining a lot about the engine right now but actually it doesn't really matter. Because uh, the reason we are running our own engine is that, uh, well, it's raining for tomorrow. Uh, at least well, it was forecast that it was going to be raining. And in the wet, a slow or quick engine doesn't really make a difference. So that's why we opted to save some budget on uh, the rental engine. It saves us a few hundred per weekend, so uh, yeah, that's why I'm running my own engine. But that does mean that in the dry we have to live with uh, being a little bit of a sitting duck on the straight here as we get overtaken again on the straight. But yeah, you can see in the corners we're just fine. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll be fine. Alright guys, uh, day is over. Yeah, in the dry... Uh we are missing some speed, but it shouldn't matter because uh, as it is forecasted now, uh, it should be raining for pretty much the whole night and up until 7 o'clock tomorrow uh, in the night. So yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, you saw the issue. Uh, wrong sprocket and an engine that is not really the extreme best of the best. Yeah, if it's, if it's wet then it shouldn't matter. That's why I'm hoping for it to be wet. Yeah, also guys, because it was uh, so fucking windy, uh, we decided to take out all of the sides of the tent because otherwise it would just fly away. Uh, yeah, our car is all done for tomorrow. Rain set up on there. And uh, yeah, should be good for tomorrow. So yeah, I'm going home in a few minutes and then uh, see you guys tomorrow. Alrighty guys, good morning. Um, it is raining and uh, that is good because otherwise we would have a huge problem. Yeah, we're going to try out a few things on the setup uh, in the warm-up because that's what the warm-up is for, of course. And after that we'll have qualifying, pre-final and final. Uh, yeah, I'm excited man. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. All right guys. Time for qualifying. I've waited for so long to have a Rotex race in the wet because I know that when when it's a road tax race in the wet, that is when we have to get some good points for the championship. Because I know that in the wet we are just strong. 
Here I noticed that we weren't really having the right track position, so I have a look behind me to see if there's anyone behind me, and I try to get le uh, let people pass, but then this happened. Yeah, as you could hear there, uh, we lost drive, and uh, that happened because uh, the nut that holds the clutch on correctly and the sprocket, uh, the sprocket which of course converts the power to the rear wheels, that came off. So it's basically like if you're in a car and put your foot on the clutch and you just floor it, then you know the engine revs but you don't go forward. And when you have a DNF this is what happens, you get picked up by the uh, DNF uh, trolley and then you have what I like to call the ride of shame, uh, which is what you see here. Then you get brought back to the pits, a little bit clumsy there, the marshal dropped my card a little bit, um, but yeah that was qualifying. Well, shit. <laughs> yeah, the, somehow the nut of the clutch came off. Never had that before. Everything has to have a first, I guess. So now we're starting at P35 because someone got disqualified. Uh, yeah, let's just see what we can do from there. Uh. Uh. <laughs> Alrighty boys, here we are on the grid for the first round of the Dutch Road X Max Challenge starting in P32, so almost last the first, I lied a little bit in the title, sorry. Uh, but yeah, here I hang a little bit back to uh, in order to give the grid some space so that if anything happens we can go through cleanly, lights out and away we go. Uh, here you can see I kind of take it cautiously but that immediately transforms to one position, two positions, three positions already on the start. We kind of force that CRG out of the way there, but then again here in this breaking zone, one, two, three, four positions, we are up to P25 already and that's just by... You know, being aware, going for that gap when you see it, and in the wet you can be a little bit more aggressive than in the dry, because if you actually touch someone in the wet, it doesn't really send you up as much. And here, again, we take two positions, so we're already up into P23, so we already gained nine positions in the first lap there. Uh, our camera cut out there a little bit, that's a cam box, of course, that once every five minutes it makes a cut, and uh, there's a few seconds that go missing. Um, but yeah, that doesn't really matter. Here, uh, again, a CRG goes wide, and we uh, take another position, so we're now up into P22. And then here we kind of, no, we don't really uh, take a position there. Uh, so we stay in P22 for now, but we do take him here. Now we're up into P21. So we almost overtook half of the field already, but the, the uh, 305 there comes back at us. He did a little bit of a switchback. Here we tried to do another switchback, but we just missed the curb. And uh, so it's P22 for the first lap, which is still not too bad, I think. Uh, we gained 10 positions, which is good. Uh, but here you can uh, really see a pattern that... Uh, started to annoy me a lot in this race um, yeah for some reason the speed was just completely gone so we uh, we did the first lap OS there was someone uh, in the middle of the track which we had to avoid which makes us lose another position actually um, but like I was saying yeah we were struggling a lot in this race and I didn't really understand why I just had no confidence in the card whatsoever here you can see that everyone sort of pulls away on exit and that's because I just couldn't get the power down well I, I could put my foot down but the car just didn't you know get the grip of the corners to accelerate so I just got a lot of wheel spin which is not ideal of course here the other Tony car tries to go wide but we just can't get the car turned in properly here you see we also have massive understand as we now get attacked by the uh, CRG as well so we were definitely struggling in this race so I knew that I had to hold on to the position that we currently had which is only P21 which is of course not where we want to be driving and also definitely not where we should be driving considering the speed that we had in the wet on Saturday but that doesn't really matter because it's Sunday now, so we kind of have to keep our head down and make the best of the situation that we got. Here we catch up to a little bit of a group ahead of us with the uh, 333 three, 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 three there, 333. They're going a little bit slowly as we do our signature move into the hairpin. But now you see that we can't really get that launch of the corner, like I said. And he does a switchback on us there, which is uh, unfortunate, let's put it like that. Here he is also very early on the break, so we kind of push him a little bit like, mate, come on go but he you can see that he also probably has a little bit of a problem because he's very slow in the middle of the corner there uh, he does kind of get a good exit here though but uh, i think he has some engine issues because on the second part of the straight we started closing up on him a lot so we had problems in the corners he had problems on the straight that's uh, not very nice of course you can see that the group ahead of us is just bolting away here i tried to take a bit, little bit of a different light to get a little bit of a better exit and yeah he definitely has engine problems so we go up the inside here yeah you can just see how much of a difference it makes when you're down on power um and w well, like I said yesterday, in the dry it's more noticeable, but in the wet, if the difference is so big, then you really had some big problems. But anyway, that's another position for us, then we skip ahead to lap uh, 12 already. 
Here you can see that we uh, take a really wide line, which is not something I usually do. But I had to try something to get the car to work. I just couldn't really get it to work for some reason. Here we make uh, another very wide line. So we make a little bit of a mistake. We also get overtaken by the number 357 there. So yeah, we're definitely on ice right now. Here we try to defend by parking it on the apex, but he just keeps his speed and launches around the outside. Which is something that I usually do too when people go defensive in the wet. But now I just couldn't fight with anything. Here you can see I'm just constantly fighting the cars. I couldn't get on the power. It was nervous, twitchy, everything. Yeah, this... It just... I just wasn't feeling it this race, man. I don't know what, what, what happened. Maybe I just ran out of talent here as we lose another position. And I make a massive mistake there and lose the back end. Yeah, no point in uh, trying to help the car forward there, mate. Uh, yeah, as we skip now to the last lap. We stayed in P22 for the rest of the race. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely not good. Not happy with that at all. Uh, and yeah, I just don't know what it was. It just didn't want to work. Uh, here, if you actually look at the lap times, you see that we are 2.2 seconds of the pace, which is a lot. And like I said, usually the wet is like my strong part. So I was definitely scratching my head like, what is going on here? Something wasn't right. Um, and yeah, we didn't really find out what it was, so strange. Well, that was shit. Yeah, no confidence in the cart whatsoever, it just felt like I was on ice, basically. And yeah, I don't know what it was. Normally, you know, you guys know I'm quite good in the rain. But now I was, yeah, three and a half seconds off the pace or something? I don't know. I haven't changed anything because, yeah, we, we don't know what to change. So yeah, we have a suspicion that it was the tires. Uh, which is cliche, but uh, yeah, we just put it on another set because it's allowed in the wet And then we'll just see what happens. Nothing to lose really. Yeah, the start was good uh, We finished I think P19, um, but yeah, all of the positions I gained was at the start. So yeah, so yeah, let's just see what we can do uh, Let's just go for it. I guess I don't know what else to do Well guys, we're back on the grid now for the final, we are allowed to start in P19 because some other people got a penalty there. Five red lights and away we go. We actually get a decently clean start as you can see, we are uh, a little bit sketchy there but uh, no uh, harm done yet. There's no, unfortunately no positions yet that we gained, uh, well actually we go up the inside of someone here and then here again we go for just an absolutely massive dive and get our elbows out and we gain like five positions in one corner. So that's good, a little bit dirty maybe because we tapped him but yeah in the wet and at the start that just happens sometimes. So uh, yeah, luckily we're now up into P14 as we get a little bit of a push from behind there. The driver behind me probably not too happy about what I did in turn 4 there. Uh, here again we turn into the corner and again you can see my head bopping back there. We get a little bit of a push and it actually turns out to be our teammate Lawrence here. who We also raced at the B&O kickoff. So I decided to give him a little bit of a taste of his own medicine there and kind of bump him out of the way again. So we gain that position back. We're now back into P14 and we immediately attack someone who leaves the door open. So that's P13. At the start you really want to just full on attack, 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 attack. Because if you don't attack, you will get attacked. And you really saw that happening right there. He decides to take a wide line as we use the windscreen wipers there. He decides to take a wide line and we just immediately go for the gap. That's really the best advice I can give you. Just continue attacking. Like, at the start, all you need to do is attack. Because if you don't, you'll just go backwards. And also, you can see now that we are actually having a bit, little bit better traction. So much, in fact, that we actually can go for a l uh, little uh, signature move there. And now, we actually get it done. Because actually, guys, I lied a little bit to you. We did change something from the pre-final to this place. And that is that we put on a different set of tires. And, uh, well, you can see that it kind of works. Kind of. Uh, could be placebo effect, but I definitely felt like I had more traction with this set of tires. But then again, um, something has to go wrong, hasn't it? Uh, as we lose a place to a Lawrence there, as the camera cut out. Um, yeah, something had to go wrong, and this time it was not the card. The card was absolutely perfect. It was my driving. With this In this race, I was just making a lot of mistakes for some reason. I just, yeah, wasn't feeling it again, I guess. Uh, yeah, I have a little bit of trouble, like, regaining the spirit after something goes wrong, which is... Well, not good of course, you, you always want to be on top of your game, no matter what happened in the weekend before. And here you can see we, uh, we get a poor exit and we get overtaken by the number 370. Uh, as we enter lap 4 now we are in the slipstream, let's see if we can overtake him back into the next couple of corners. I think we can, as he makes a little bit of a mistake there, and again there. Uh, despite those mistakes he gets quite a good exit, so we try to go up the inside here again, into this hairpin. Try to hook onto the curb, let's see if we can get a good enough exit. No, he just about does the switch back on us. 
but then we're so close that we can go for another dive from here. We go up the inside. He just kind of turns in. He squeezes us onto the apex. But because of that, we kind of run him wide as well. So really hard racing here. Now we have the inside. We have to park the bus so that he can't do the switchback. And boom, job done. We overtook him back again. But yeah, like I was saying, I was just making a lot of mistakes in this race for some reason. And yeah, it just didn't feel good for some reason. I, yeah, bleh. I don't know what happened. Anyways, lap 10 now. We uh, caught up to the next guy ahead of us, the CRG with the, uh, with the very bright green helmet. He makes a little bit of a mistake there. So again, in the hairpin, we try to go for the move there. But we overcook it a little bit. We run right, go onto the dirty part of the track. We lose traction and boom, we lost two positions because of that. That's how quickly it can go in karting sometimes. You really have to... Always make sure that you get a good enough exit when you overtake and especially in the wet. Because in the wet it's not really that hard to, you know, go up the inside of someone because people usually go wide. But then getting a better exit than the other guy, that's the most difficult part and we definitely didn't manage to do that here. Here they're going side by side so I decide to drive behind the one on the inside which of course always works. And then because the 370 is sleeping we also go up the inside of him. So now we actually ended up gaining those positions back. That was a little bit lucky. Um, yeah, I just should not have uh, messed up that first move, which is something we did. But yeah, like I said, we got away with it a little bit. Um, so yeah, now uh, lap 10, six laps to go. Let's keep our head down. But unfortunately, we have the cam box and uh, it ran out of battery before the end. Luckily, though, um, yeah, we stayed in this position. Uh, here you can see that we, uh, uh, we, we actually finished the race in P12, but got promoted to P11 because someone got a penalty. And uh, this time, if you look at the fastest lap time, the fastest lap time is a 57.4 and we did a 58.2. So we're still a long way off the pace, um, but not as much as we were in the first race. And I still think the tires had something to do with that. Not too happy about that one. Uh, even though the kart was perfect in this race, I just made a lot of mistakes, uh, which most of all I left out because it was just me breaking too late and running wide all of the time. Gotta dig deep, focus and not make it happen again. All right, guys. Yeah, final over. Yeah, those tires did actually make a difference, about one and a half seconds, but still, yeah, I just couldn't get comfortable, man. Uh, yeah, that's just uh, me, my driving. For some reason, it just, yeah, it, I couldn't get comfortable. I don't know why. Don't, it doesn't always go your way. And anyways, guys, with that, also comes the end of this video. Now, if you guys enjoyed that, then please consider hitting those like and subscribe buttons. You know, you really help me when you do that. We're still trying to get to 100K, and every sub is one step close to that, so hit that button. Now, last race we did it, we actually got a podium. It was in the Dutch Four Stroke Championship. Really good weekend. Go check it out. It's on screen right now. This video, however, is over, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.